Hey there, Backyard Explorers. Mr. T here again on another beautiful day to be back at the sanctuary and outdoors. Hopefully you guys are getting out there too and getting healthy. Well, this week we are talking all about scents. And I don't mean common sense, and I don't mean these kinds of scents. The kind of scents that I'm talking about are your five senses. Your hearing, your sight, your smell, your taste, and your touch. Now, first thing we want to do is ask ourselves, well, why do we have these senses to begin with? And do other things have the same senses that we do? And the answer is no, they definitely do not. You see, your senses are a way for your body to figure out what's going on around it, to understand your environment, where you are. In fact, our senses are actually thousands and thousands and hundreds of millions of years of evolution. And they are an adaptation. Now, an adaptation is a change that uh, happens over time. And if that change is beneficial or helpful over time, that change will become permanent. So the development of our senses, of these five senses that we use, well, they over time have become useful to us and that's why we keep them basically. Uh, other changes that aren't useful, they don't get passed down. So one of the things we wanna figure out is, is why we have these adaptations in the first place, like what does helpful mean? And what it is, is three things. You're change will become an adaptation. We develop our senses because number one, it can help us find food. You will keep an adaptation, number two, if it helps you not become food for somebody else. And number three, to help you find a mate so that you can pass those changes on. All right, Backyard Explorers, since we're talking about senses this week, one of the ones that I really want to focus on, since it's one of the easiest ones to figure out and to find where you live, out in your backyard or wherever you might be, is to open up the window and listen. Today we've got a lot of wind around, so it's going to make hearing some of the animals possibly a little bit difficult. but. What I'm going to be doing is, is I'm going to be using our handy dandy parabolic microphone setup over here that we made back in, uh, if you want to look at how we made this, we did that back in the Vernal Pools episode, I believe. But I've just got my phone clipped in here with a microphone on it. And we're going to use this to really focus. I mean, basically think of it like a giant ear. We're going to focus the sound in and we're going to listen to what's going on with some of the animals out here. What we're hearing mostly around this time of year is we hear the animals calling to each other. They're using their voices. They're using their hearing. Um, and the reason they're doing this, mostly birds right now, are calling to mark their territory. They're singing their song to let all the other birds know, this is my area. This is where I have my nest, and this is my area that I'm protecting and defending, and this is my food in this area, so go find your own space to do that. Uh, the other reason that birds are calling right now is they're calling to find a mate, so that they can build a nest and have some eggs together. So. We want to listen to these different kinds of songs that they're doing, and some of them are calling songs, some of them are go-away songs, uh, or rather calls, and some of them you can sometimes hear a mom calling to the babies, or the babies calling to the mom saying, we're hungry, eat, feed me, feed me. Now there are some tools you can use to try to use sound to figure out what birds are around you even when you can't see them. The real professional birders, the ones who are in the World Series of Birding each year, yes there is such a thing, uh, those folks, they do almost entirely by sound. They know all the calls by heart. They're really quite incredible. I think this is one of the hardest ways to be able to identify things. I'm a much more visual person uh, than I am listening. You can ask my wife that. 
Um, <laughs> but what you can do is there are certain apps that will help to try to figure out what birds you may or may not have. They're a little bit finicky, but one of them is called Song Sleuth. And Song Sleuth, you can uh, have it listen and it'll try to like Shazam kind of thing, figure out what bird is calling. You can also go to the Merlin Bird ID app. And the Merlin Bird ID app is you can go through the birds that you think you might have seen, uh, if you did get a glimpse of them, and then you can play the songs that are associated with those birds on there and figure out, oh yeah, that was definitely the one, or no, it didn't sound anything like this. Um, you can do these types of things with frogs as well. Uh, they're calling right now. They do the same that birds do. They use their hearing and their voices to talk to each other and communicate. Um, and so do insects. Uh, there's a number of animals that use sound. Uh, there's a lot of mammals out there using sound right now as well. We've got the coyote. You're going to hear those guys, that's for sure. They're, uh, they're calling to the members of their pack, and the babies are calling, the new pups are calling, and there's a lot of vocalization going on right now for them too. So we're going to be exploring some more of these sounds. One of the great places for you to find uh, these nature sounds, if you want to figure out what you heard, it's called the Macaulay sound library and you can find that right here uh, it's from the Cornell lab and it is really just the most wonderful resource to figure out what you may have been hearing it sometimes you hear some strange sounds at night and you're gonna want to know what those are all right let's go explore some more good morning all you outdoor explorers I'm whispering because we're out here nice and early to be able to hear all the birds calling. You might hear some of them in the background right now, although it's wind is picking up, so that's gonna make it a little tougher. So best time to hear birds is usually in the early morning. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be trying out one of our apps, one of the bird song ID apps and the song sleuth ID apps. You can see we've got it right here. We'll do our recording and see if it can figure out who we have around us. So we're trying out Song Sleuth now. And we did a little recording. And now what it's telling us is that we can actually isolate, which means pick out the different songs that it's heard, which is kind of neat. See, what they have there is what's called a spectrograph, and that shows you what the sounds would look like if you could see sound. See, this is what it heard. Let's run the ID. So what it's saying is, is that because we had a long recording, there could be lots of birds. So it's going to suggest the one that it thinks that we're hearing. Now, the top one it says is bobolink, which I know it's not. It also tells you, not common. And the bottom one says marsh wren, which I can also tell you probably isn't what we've got. It also says uncommon for where we are and the time of year. But that middle one right there that says common and American goldfinch, well, guess what, guys? That's who's up there in that tree because I can see his bright, beautiful colors. This is a fun thing to do. You can even do it from your window. Open the window, see what you can find. So since we do think that it's this goldfinch, what we can also do is play the actual song and see if it sounds like what we're hearing. So let's give it a shot. I can tell you for sure, even with my old ears here, that's what we're hearing. What a fun app. 
Hey there, Backyard Explorers. In case you can't see me, it's Mr. T here again, and I'm out here in the middle of the night, which is the perfect time to talk about sound and our sense of hearing. Because at night, well, you're not going to be using your eyes so much, are you? Because you don't have a whole lot more than the moonlight back here. So most of the animals that are nocturnal, or out at night, they will tend to use hearing. Like smell as well, of course, and uh, other some of the other senses, but hearing is going to be one of their main ones. So you're going to see a lot of animals with larger ears, like bats. Uh, bats use sound. They actually project sound out of their mouth that echoes off of their prey, like moths and insects that they're catching while they fly. Hopefully we see a couple going by us right uh, any minute now. And those bats, they will send that out there. It's called echolocation. And it bounces off of them like sonar and comes back to their ears and gives them a picture in their head of what they're seeing from the sounds. It's so very cool. Now, since we're out here at night, one of the great things at this time of year where I am at the sanctuary uh, in Connecticut is we have the spring peepers out. And the spring peepers are a teeny, teeny, tiny little tree frog. A wonderful little animal. Uh, gorgeous, about the size of your thumbnail with a little, they're light brown with a little brown X on their back. Um, they're so incredible, I call them sort of the, X, the X-Men of the forest, if you uh, know the comic book characters. They're kind of superheroes on their own. Now, these little spring peepers, pound for pound, they really are superheroes because they are one of the loudest animals that there are. For the teeny, teeny little tiny things there are, they are. You can hear them from over a mile away when they're in full voice. So you can hear them in the background right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our electronic microphone slash salad bowl. And we're going to try to see if our app over here, what it thinks of it. Now, I'm hoping that it figures out that it's a spring peeper. Although I've always understood bird song to be... Uh, a bird app, so or song sleuth to be a bird app. So let's give it a run and see what happens. Okay, so let's take a look at what it figured out. Right there, you can see the spectrograph. That's what the sound looks like if you could see the sound, all the highs and lows, and what's happening there. This is how the computer figures out. It compares it to other recordings that we know what they are. So we're going to run ID, and sure enough, up comes Spring Peeper as the first suggestion. Now it's also talking about, well, maybe, it's uncommon, but maybe it could be an osprey or a red-tailed hawk. Um, I can understand how it might think a little bit about that. They have that high-pitched kya kya, kind of like the beep beep that the peepers are doing right now. But the fact is, oh, it's it knows it's its peeper. This guy right here, that's who he's putting up. So I actually didn't realize that they also did frog calls with the song sleuth. So. If you want to, you can go out and see which creatures of the night are listening to you.